Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Werner Hack. I'm the International Technical Sales Manager for Civil Designer Software. I'm very, very glad to be joined today by Mr. Patrick Neal. Patrick has over 30 years experience both in industry and lecturing. And I think there's a lot of uh, interesting insights that Patrick can offer us, uh, not just on design uh, side, but also on you know what people have to expect when they get into industry. So Patrick, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Werner. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me, Patrick, uh, I, I want to get started right at the beginning. Where did your career start with, with civil engineering and, and when did it start? I actually worked for the, uh, for the province. Uh, it was then known as the Cape Provincial um, Roads Department. And um, I I'd, uh, applied actually to get into, uh, into their drawing office. Mm. And after a month or two, um, it didn't suit me. Um, I realized I was going to be office bound and, and I'm a kind of country boy. And they said, well, what about, um, the soil testing industry? And, um, I, uh, got into laboratory testing, um, learned about the role of specifications and how to interpret results. And you need to go out into the field and uh, that really a kindle something within me and mm. um I, I took a liking to um to working with different folk um who were responsible for a lot of um materials testing um then we were known as technicians um we couldn't progress any further than a senior technician mm. and um and then as education evolved um, we discovered that you could actually progress a lot further and start picking up more knowledge. And um, I think back in 81 or 82, um, the, uh, the um, colleges were then converted to Technicons. Okay. And the Cape Technicon was born and um, I did a civil engineering diploma. And um, that's when my career really took off um, when you start – to be introduced to um, uh, to new um, aspects of engineering, and for me it was in uh, road construction and uh, the development of um, working with materials suitable for uh, road construction. So um, was went on to various training courses to um, like working with a quarry. Mm -hmm. I even learned how to stick. A, um, a piece of dynamite into uh, into a rock face. Um, nice. Explode things. This is what boys like to do. Mm. You know, they like to investigate and pull things apart. And I, I found it, and it was fun for me. Mm. It it was great. And so, um, um, yeah, things started exploding for me, and I was eventually posted out to um, Beaufort West, um, and. We started building um, the end, re, well, rebuilding the N1 from um, um, Luhamka mm -hmm. um, and uh, progress past um, uh, Three Sisters and onto Richmond. And um, it was great. You know, you learned not just about materials, but concrete works, asphalt, um, how the, uh, the, the development of uh, stresses and strains take place. Uh, within um, pavements, um, it was it was great fun to see how roads developed and especially surfacings and how they crack and how they succumb to weather and the mm. climate and um, making changes. Um, yeah, it was great fun. Mm, it is fun. It's also nice to then have that theoretical knowledge and then put it to practice, right? Yes. So your uh, um, it. Uh, choosing the right institution um, that's going to expose you to um, good civil engineering practices. Um, I learned very early that I could either go into um, design and construction mm -hmm. or split off into maintenance. And I like the design and construction phase, um, like getting my hands dirty, um, going into a laboratory, uh, putting materials under stresses and strains, um, looking at design parameters mm. and um, examining, um, you need a you need a good inkling for for maths. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I enjoyed it. I think a good engineer can't ignore the numbers. Um, he's going to have to critically um, apply his um, expertise in that area. Um, but when materials fail, a lot of other things fail. Sometimes mm. we don't see the surfaces or see the defects or we see the defects in the surface, but we don't understand that there's something terribly wrong downstairs. Mm. Um, we're coming out of our winter um, in the Cape, and um, the first thing that we notice is the development of potholes. And there's a reason for that. Mm. And getting behind the reason and finding out, well, what can one do to um, circumvent that? Well, that we know it's going to happen. But this is where we model uh, and predict fatigue and failure. Um, and you can take uh, your hypothesis into a laboratory. You can apply um, your knowledge there and develop a model that would um, incorporate different ideas to, um, to change the design. Mm. And that's what I enjoy doing. Mm. Um, if you're applying a modifier or an additive to um, – Asphalt, um, you can extend the life of a surface. You can improve um, stresses within the, or make sure that the stresses within your base and your sub base and deeper down um, are at its um, maximum. And that will, or rather, that you uh, meeting the minimum requirements, then um, the road will respond. Mm. Um, but you know, things change um, over the years. There's always different models coming out. Um, especially our mechanistic design, which has moved on now from the 70s when we used empirical methods. Mm. Um, so there's a lot that goes on in the background, and we trust that the software that we that we design is doing the right, is looking at the right things, mm. um, and that you can adjust and make sure that uh, what you observe on site is actually being developed um, or predicted by software. Mm. I mean, what made you go then into lecturing and, and working at the university? Well, um, once I, um, I think it was in the mid nineties, I went into to lecturing, um, because there was a call for people in industry that have experience, um, to carry over, um, what they've learned in industry into education, because there was a trend for educators uh, to come, or, or the modern day educator to leave the classroom and to re-enter the classroom instead of sitting in the desk to sit behind the lecture podium. Mm. And um, but now, what about the the, uh, the industrial experience? So they needed to balance that out because less, and it, it is a trend, less and less. Um, engineers, or well, sorry, less and less educators um, have got loads of industrial experience. Mm. So I made a decision, you know, when I come to the end of retirement, I don't want to, to let go. I want to stay as relevant as, as possible. That's why I, en I enjoy uh, technical reading and, mm. and uh, catching up with research and then bringing that into the lecture um, classroom mm. so that students can be um, equipped with uh, not just industrial experience but modern day um, teaching and lecturing methods so that you can prep them before they go out into industry. Mm. So Patrick, I mean, is it quite challenging to balance, you know, the first principles that people learn at institutions and then use of software? Um, is it is that quite challenging to balance the two? It is um, and it's good to um, to use um, software that will actually test your first principles. Um, what is very good is that during the design, you can um, you can stop and look at, um, for instance, a spreadsheet of of projected results. Um, if you're not happy, um, you can make a change. You can see the changes taking place um, before you move to the the final design. Mm. And um, Civil Designer does that for you very easily. And of course, in, in civil engineering, there's a lot of different areas of specialization, mm. um, but they do overlap with one another um, inevitably. Uh, mm. What did you do or what do you do for students? How do you get them ready uh, to handle that sort of integration and that overlap? Um, so they, in, they are introduced to, to uh, roadworks, 
They're introduced to sewers. They're introduced to water reticulation and stormwater. And at one stage, they were all um, theoretically based, uh, not much project work. But our governing body, EXA, uh, requires that at least 30% of your subject material should be aligned to a project. Mm. And so we discovered that um, if you want to become real um, and relevant in the world today, you need to have an integrated project. Um, what I discovered uh, is that the um, the easiest way to do that is to use um, a software package um, that can look at individual aspects. If, if a road design needs to change, um, does that affect my sewers and my water? Yes, it does. Um, can I switch between the various uh, design principles? Um, if I can't, then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to struggle. Mm. Um, so um, a package like Civil Designer does that for us. And it, it allows you to, to switch in between different designs. And uh, what I love is that um, there's, there's an aspect um, in the render view that gives us a 3D perspective of what we've, what I've designed and does a change need to take place. And this is what students like to see. Otherwise things become a little bit abstract for them, but when they see that um, in a, in a 3D view, um, that's, that, that encourages them to be, to learn more. Mm. So, I mean, every year we hear a lot of people and we see a lot of people at expos and things like that, mm. considering studying civil engineering. What kind of advice would you give to people that one, want to study it and then two are studying it before they, they get into industry? Many institutions have open days and, and, uh, the, um, tertiary uh, university that I attended and ended um, uh, my career recently um, had open days where they would they would invite uh, students and many many um, students um, visit our stalls that uh, exhibit um, civil engineering, water sewers, and uh, um, surveying, and it's just to approach um, openly um, lecturers. Um, that are on point call where, where they could share, um, what the, the, the program is all about. And, and usually a, a good grounding in maths and science is, is, is an indication that, um, um, that they might succeed, but also once, not just at, at tertiary institutions, um, but to visit, um, uh, contractors mm -hmm. and uh, um, consulting engineers, software companies, and and find out you know what they can offer um, in support of um, of engineering as a whole. Um, but generally, um, don't. It's like with any career, you know, you, you need to try something. Mm. Uh, it, I know it's tough, um, but um, uh, in deciding, you know, what should should I become a vet? <laughs> should I, you know, a medical doctor or should I become a civil engineer? Um, for me, uh, the crucial thing was I loved working with my hands and I, and I love to get involved socially, mm. um, in, the, uh, in the urban environment and, and to make sure that things run like clockwork. That's tough, but without engineers, you can't design anything. I always think of, you know, students, they ask me, you know, how did, how did things work in the past? I said, well, you know, you, t you take the Italians, you know, they designed that, uh, the Tower of Pisa was designed straight up. Mm. It, it took that thing to start leaning over for them to understand, listen, we need to get involved in, in some engineering aspects of soils, um, that we don't understand. Mm. And it's investigating the things that you don't understand is, is what did it for me. And I think m maybe for others as well. Mm. And um, just going forward now, um, obviously you've had a long successful career both in industry and lecturing. Um, what made you want to decide to continue? I mean, you could have stayed retired, feet up uh, in the sun. What 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 made you uh, want to continue? I decided not to um, to let um, my engineering experience go to waste. Um, a, a lot of folk do retire and they're not involved anymore. They might attend a few conferences now and again or become a fellow of a of an institute. 
um, I decided to to join a company that can um, use my experience and um, and build upon it and invigorate young engineers to do the same. So that that's what uh, brings pleasure for me. Mm. Well, Patrick, we're glad that you decided to join the team and you didn't retire. And we, I'm really looking forward to working with you. And um, we, there's definitely a lot that you can offer, not just us at Civil Designer, but everybody using uh, who uses the software and students and, and in industry. And I really thank you for your time today and, and sharing some insights. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if any of you would like to um, get more information on Civil Designer, please visit our website. The link is in the description. Um, if there's anything, maybe some career advice you want to get from Patrick, uh, please email us at info at civildesigner.com. We'll also put it down in the description. And we hope you enjoyed uh, our time with Patrick today. Good to be here. Thanks, Patrick. Okay. Thank you.